This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Mom and Pop Eateries, Eateries of Grey Bruce. I'm your host, Rob Leonard, and uh, I've said it, and I'll say it time and time again, what a great trip this has been across Grey and Bruce counties, meeting some of the amazing Mom and Pops. And uh, we're going to head back a little bit east now. I think we were over in Owen Sound last week. We're going to head back east into the beautiful town of Meaford, one of my favorite spots uh, in Grey and Bruce counties. And... Uh, it certainly is growing and changing uh, over the years. And one of the big parts of it is the addition of a fine dining restaurant by the name of Chez Gilles Fine Dining and Catering on the main street in Meaford. I'm very pleased to have with me the chef and owner Gilles Haché and uh, restaurant manager Simon Newbold. Newbold. Uh, gentlemen, uh, thanks so much for doing the show this week. You're welcome. welcome. All right, uh, let's get started. And as I said to you before taping, uh, Simon, uh, after you and I spoke the other day and, and doing some research, I had a list of questions and we could go on for probably a, a two hour show, but uh, uh, I've narrowed it down. So uh, we won't go over uh, the half hour limit here. be just so many fantastic things to talk about. So let's talk about uh, the restaurant uh, first and let's talk uh, fine dining on the main street in Meaford. Uh, I'm not sure if Meaford has ever had, um, had a fine dining places um, on the main streets. Uh, I think I remember some places just, you know, uh, off the beaten path a little bit, but uh, how important it was it for you to, to make sure that it was on the main street or was that something you consciously uh, did? Well, the uh, we, we did open the restaurant on July 1st, um, but before um, I took over the space, uh, there was uh, two previous uh, owner uh, and restaurant who were classified as uh, fine dining. Uh, there was Andrew's Root that was here probably I think for two years or three years and then uh, the, the, the business had been sold to another um, venue and um, when I took over in July the, the space was empty. And myself, I've been involved in Meaford for probably now over four years, four and a half, doing catering and chef at home and involved in the community as uh, a lot of volunteer program and through the uh, Anglican Church. And I always contemplating to open a business in Meaford as a restaurant or have a storefront. And um, during the time this summer, the space uh, came up and uh, was... Uh, available so I just uh, jump on the occasion and I say let's go for it uh, without knowing too much how successful it could be or that will be during the uh, pandemic of the uh, COVID-19 but uh, here we are uh, almost six months now that I'm here so and um, of course I have found uh, down the road a uh, wonderful uh, gentleman beside me who uh, became the uh, the manager. Mm -hmm. well, that's, and, uh, that's fantastic. It's it's real. Uh, Sorry, Simon. Go ahead. I think we we mentioned as well how important it was having the uh, the patios on the main highway 26 uh, just for exposure and people driving through and stopping because they saw all of the beautiful patios on uh, on the strip here with uh, with a number of restaurants. Yeah, let's touch on that a little bit. So you're also, uh, Simon, you're a member of the DIA, and uh, you mentioned in our conversation that uh, uh, the patios were, were to uh, help the restaurants, um, you know, to increase their seating ability. Uh, but it really, uh, it took on a different uh, a different face. Uh, it it uh, became something that the DIA may continue on again next year, but because it... Uh, it worked in everybody's favor, really. That's right. Yeah, a, a number of uh, number of customers that we had uh, coming through uh, mentioned that they stopped because they saw the patios, 
Uh, it's not a town that they would necessarily have stopped at uh, normally. Uh, but because they stopped to eat at one of the uh, establishments here on the main highway, they took the time to wander around town and visit the local stores, and it, it really helped to boost the economy. And even today in the BIA meeting, they were saying how many more visitors we've had in the town that are coming up for short term, uh, so either for the day or up to a week's day, which we haven't had previously. That's fantastic. Uh, you know, it starts off... Uh, trying to help uh, one sector of, of the economy, but then uh, inadvertently it uh, it really benefited everyone, which is fantastic. So, and uh, I know I I drove through uh, me for I drive through me for uh, fairly often, and uh, seeing uh, the patios and the quality of the patios, uh, yours in particular, uh, is so colorful, and then it really did add to the aesthetics of the, of the main street in Meaford. So uh, uh, it was a great idea. So uh, let's let's talk about uh, the fair that people can find at Chez Gilles. And uh, I, reading from your website, it's uh, an Acadian influence, uh, traditional style, um, all of those things blended together, but, uh, I, I, you know, I did my apprenticeship many years ago, but I take a look at your menu and I see the things that you do, and it, it really takes me back to my beginnings as a chef uh, when I see uh, Salad Nissoir, for example. Yeah, so that was our, um, our most recent change, actually, to the uh, to the dinner menu uh, included a few more kind of traditionally French items. Uh, everything is uh, chef-created. We, we go through weeks and weeks of uh, contemplation of our dishes, but uh, nine times out of ten, it's a dish that uh, comes from the heart and ends up on the menu being a favorite. And we try yes. to be faithful, you know, to the uh, uh, who we are and... Uh, uh, where we want to go, you know, and to bring uh, some background, some root on the plate, you know, like uh, the Acadian, you know, um, the people are very well known for um, the beauty of the plate and the taste of the region, the local thing, you know. So we are trying to be as faithful possible to that tradition and to bring it on the menu and uh, we are still actually working on the menu to make sure it is what exactly we want on it, you know. And um, we we do try to uh, attract uh, as much possible uh, people as possible. And uh, so that's why each night at each dinner, um, I'm uh, I'm uh, greeting each table after they have been served to make sure that everyone is okay and. Then we ask questions, you know, is there something else that we can do for you or something else that you would like to, to, to taste? Or So we adjust our palate to what we uh, hear and what we receive as comments. And that's that's key. Your customers absolutely love that uh, that personal attention to, to and uh, you know to to honestly feel that their opinion does matter and and uh, when it comes to your menu planning and uh, that's a great uh, a great move on your part. Let's talk about uh, the Acadian influence uh, that is prevalent in in your menu and in your restaurant. A lot of people may not uh, understand. Uh, when they think Acadian, they may think uh, east coast of Canada, um, New Orleans, for example. But uh, it had a beginning. It had to start somewhere, and it, it certainly wasn't in those two areas. If you'd like to touch on that a little bit. Well, one of the areas, yes, it's from there, because I grew up in the east coast. I'm from New Brunswick myself. And um, so I've uh, been surrounded by seafood and fish and... Um, all those um, fresh fish that come out from the, the boat and the yacht uh, directly from the day if we want to, to, to have an harvest that day. Uh, so, um, in a way, yes, it's directly from there because uh, mom's family are pretty much all fishermen and uh, my dad's family were more um, woodcutter and uh, woodbuilder and military family. So, uh, but uh, the influence for myself for the food, it's on my mom's side. Like the Acadian dish, it's basically um, a dish, it's come for food, but to another level, to another level where 
you bring uh, joy, love, and passion to it and created a beautiful dish with it, you know? And I'm very faithful to the recipe that it's originated from back home, that is from, for the dish, you know? Uh, I cook my fish exactly as I learned from home. Um, the seasoning is a uh, uh, secret seasoning that we learned from the family and um, how we, we, we treat the fish and uh, the seafood. And um, so there is many ways that you can cook um, uh, seafood, but uh, we do have a, a specific way that uh, uh, it's, it, it makes the dishes uh, more um, uh, lovely and enjoyable. And seafood really is one of those things that uh, um, it, there's a fine line between it being done and being overcooked. Uh, you know, there's an art to cooking seafood. I think, it, you know, there may be, you know, some restaurants will stray away from, from seafood, uh, getting into the scallops and things like that a little bit because, uh, um, because like you say, there really is that fine line, uh, um, you know, and making sure that it's cooked properly. Exactly, because um, as you know also, the temperature and the method of cooking are uh, critical in any kind of dish, you know? And uh, either you succeed with it, either you're not. And if you want to succeed with something, you have to, to repeat it and uh, be faithful to the way that uh, you have achieved the first one uh, very successfully. And um, it's also a uh, heart, you know, it's, it's uh, a creation that you do and you must have the passion for, to do it. You know, you cannot just cook something and say that you have done it, uh, but you must have the passion for it and do it properly. And when you do it, you have to make sure that you will love what is your new your plate if you serve it to someone, if you want them to love it too. You're absolutely right, 100%. If you have to care, you have to care about what you're doing. And, uh, um, you know, I've mentioned this on the show a couple of times too, where, um, you know, the things that I learned back, and I, I'm loving this because it's taking me back to my roots when I when I first started cooking. And, uh, uh, you know, instructors or chefs telling me that uh, you're an artist, you're creating something, and the plate is your palate. Right, it's no different than a, than an artist creating a, a painting. You know, you, you don't just throw it on. You know, they don't just throw paint paint on a canvas. So you don't just throw your food on a plate. You need to you need to care. And, and as uh, Chef Hay said, the the passion needs to be there. And a lot of cases you can see it. You know, when when a plate comes to your table, you can see whether this guy gives a darn or not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, let's talk now about, where did I want to go next? Uh, all right, let's talk about the hours of operation at, at, uh, at Chez Gilles. Uh, when are you open? And I noticed that you uh, also offer a Sunday brunch now. That's right, so we, uh, we open on a Wednesday at 11 and uh, operate until closing. Um, and then that goes uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, Sunday we open for brunch between uh, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And it right. is uh, the Sunday brunch is became very uh, successful, and uh, we have a lot of people on Sunday, and it's um, it's it's also amazing the follower. We have lots of followers, you know, people who are following what we do and care about what we do because we are fully involved in the community too, you know. Okay, let's uh, let's take a step back now. Let's go back to when you first opened in July. Uh, a lot of people would think, oh my, uh, why would you open a restaurant <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic? But it, it see, sorry, excuse me. I was uh, actually, um, somebody drew you to my attention on the page. So I was actually following to see, uh, uh, to see when you were gonna open and things like that. So I could uh, start sharing it on my Facebook page. And, um, uh, you, you seem to time it uh, pretty close to, or, or if not, right when the patios were allowed to open. Would that be uh, would would that be the case? Well, it was pretty much the case. The patio uh, subject was in the meeting with the chamber, and uh, 
Um, I think two weeks before uh, or three weeks before I, oh, I did open the door. And, um, but without knowing, honestly, without knowing, patio will be involved. And even when we started to discuss about patio, no one knew that if it will be possible. There was a question of insurance, there was a question about policy uh, and public space and parking. And so, and then suddenly it was approved at the council. But um, I did open uh, not with the, uh, as of the thinking, well, what will happen if the, uh, the COVID-19 is flop everything out, you know? No, I didn't think about it. I think about the chance that I have to have this space that was empty, that was vacant, and the landlord and I knew kind of each other, and he said, well, if you want the space, it is empty, so you can have it. So I jumped on the occasion, and um, I said, let's go for it. And uh, to be successful sometime, you have to not just look at the moment that you are, you have to look further and with expectation and a plan. So uh, that's how I did a uh, process to open this place here. And uh, uh, if you have been asked me the question last March, if I will be here today talking to you, it will have probably been uh, no. Uh, but uh, the timing was right. The timing was perfect. And uh, I think at this point, I can say that we have done the right thing. Yeah, so we originally opened just patio only. Uh, we had uh, six tables outside, so we could seat um, 16, uh, 18 people outside uh, at a push 20 uh, and, and socially distanced, obviously, with the tables. And then about a month after that, interior dining was approved, uh, which helped to bring the restaurant back to its normal capacity. Uh, so we were operating with about 36 to 40 people, or 36 to 40 covers uh, between patio and inside. Uh, unfortunately now with, uh, with winter taking hold, we're back down to about 22 seats inside the restaurant. And that's, uh, I guess 36 wouldn't be manageable. It's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> but the, uh, um, and I also noticed now. Correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. You didn't shy away uh, from uh, from takeout. Uh, you also offered the takeout option. Yes, we do. We do. Uh, since the beginning, we have served takeout. Um, even now, uh, we often have calls to. Uh, even some people will call a couple of days prior and have a certain day that they will pick up a takeout. And um, it is an option, uh, and it is with the full menu. Uh, at this time, they can order from the full menu, from lamb to steak to risotto, and um, so. And uh, we are trying to be very punctual on time. That is very, very, very important for me uh, to be punctual. And um, so, um, it is working right now. That's great, you know, and I, I know uh, some chefs are, especially when you when you're dealing with the uh, fine dining and the cuisine that you that you put out. So there's a lot that would shy away from uh, from the takeout angle, not really wanting to uh, put their food in a in a takeout box. But uh, hats off to you for, for doing that and uh, making all of your menu uh, available to everyone. I think that's I, I, I commend you for that. That's a uh, that's what great. What I say to our patron on that regard is that, you know, uh, the only uh, the only thing uh, on that is that they, uh, the plating, it's not giving uh, the patron justice and doesn't give the food justice for the plating itself. The taste is there. It's the same taste, the same recipe, but the plating itself, because you eat with uh, what you see first, and uh, when you see a plate, it gives you the inspiration of jump in and eat it all, but uh, we try to do our best, even with the takeout for the plating. That's fantastic. All right, now uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to toot your horn here for uh, for a minute. There is so many things that you've accomplished in the community, and I believe you said you've only been only been there for four years, Chef. In the Meaford area, yes, I've been involved yeah. in, in uh, been living in Gray now for uh, exactly seven years. 
uh, in the and yeah. uh, but I've been involved in Meaford for uh, four years. I started at the Anglican Church, and um, I opened there um, a meal program uh, on the uh, Friday night, a free dinner for the community. And then after I uh, lodged uh, a free breakfast on the Wednesday morning every week. And um, with, of course, the COVID-19, the breakfast is not on uh, anymore. And uh, uh, so I've been involved in Meaford with MIF, with uh, the Meaford All, um, different group, association, um, chef at home, catering, wedding, um, so I'm, I'm pretty well known here in, in Meaford and in Gray. Uh, I have a lot of followers, I, I have to say. And, um, so yeah, and we yes. have the program right now, so. Well, and we should congratulate you for, uh, being, uh, awarded the Citizen of the Year Award earlier this year in uh, in Meaford. Uh, that's a major accomplishment. But uh, looking at uh, some of the some of the fundraising events and some of the things that you've done, I can understand why. Uh, uh, just recently, let's talk about the Big Head River Food Grains Project. That project, and I believe Simon was saying that uh, we were a little delayed at the beginning because you were presenting uh, uh, the check to these people for eight thousand three hundred and forty five dollars was the last figure i had seen uh donating to the big head rivers food grains but that figure um when the government uh, is going to up to four times uh, matching that could be well over forty one thousand dollars if you want to talk about uh, that and where that money uh goes to and what a great project it is well, the, um, the Food Grain Foundation um, is, um, there is about 16 churches of different domination involved in there. Uh, lots of farmer uh, across Canada uh, who are also involved. And actually the president this year um, of the Food Grain is Henry. Uh, he is from Meaford, he is a farmer. And um, it is my second year that I'm involved as a chef to provide um, one meal. It's always, usually in October, uh, during the, uh, the week of the Thanksgiving. But this year, according to the situation, uh, it was delayed. And uh, we did it last Sunday. Last year, we did it from the church uh, with a dinner. But this year, I came up with the option of uh, kind of a drive through pickup uh, roast beef dinner. And um, we end up with 376 meal that was uh, cooked that night and delivered in one hour. And uh, so we, um, it was, I really believe for those situation that the free will donation is the best way to go. In everything I do basically for the community, that, that's how I, I, I proceed. And we end up with the final number today, the check that I give was 8,395. Uh, we got a donation yesterday of a $50 to add to that. So 395, uh, 8,000. And uh, the money will go uh, from my side, what we have received. It's, um, it's all profitable to the uh, foundation and uh, the store, the restaurant, myself, um, have given the food uh, to provide the meal. And um, so this money now will be used, as you said, will be uh, time for with the government. And um, so um, it's almost 42,000 and uh, it will help uh, the foundation to provide food, to provide necessity, to provide uh, uh, skill, uh, learning, um, uh, teaching how to farm, how to provide uh, food to families, how to, um, to help family who are really in need across the world to, um, to have a better life, you know. 
And they do touch, they do touch some uh, need in Canada too. It's not just overseas. And uh, so what the foundation go do is basically they travel, they go and teach other farmer how to improve their skill, how to improve their food, and how to uh, be uh, uh, successful in there. That's a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, thing to be involved in, and what a huge contribution you made. And uh, uh, I can understand the Citizen of the Year award, Simon Newbold. Let's let's talk about you for a few minutes, all right? And uh, a very important job you're in the front of the house, uh, just as important as the back of the house. Uh, maybe. I wouldn't say a lot more stressful, but you're dealing one-on-one -on -one with your customer right there. And uh, let, let's talk about your background and, uh, um, you know, how you ended up with Chez Gilles. Yeah, absolutely. So I originally from the UK, um, learned my trade in hospitality there. Um, so about 20 years, 23 years in hospitality uh, between bars, restaurants, uh, hotels. Uh, I've been in the Meaford area for about 10 years, uh, uh, came up uh, with uh, family in the area, family in New Brunswick as well, and uh, met Jules through a mutual friend, uh, and just the timing was right. Uh, I'd been off work for a little while looking after my daughter, and desperate to get back into the industry, and mutual friend introduced us, we sat down, and uh, discovered that we both had a, a love of uh, looking after the community, putting the community first, and loving food that we put out, giving people experiences in restaurants. Uh, it's not just uh, the general day-to-day -day kind of, as you say, just put it on a plate and put it out, uh, care and attention and looking after guests, giving them a, a real experience. And uh, right. the common friend that introduced both of us said, she told me, well, if it worked out between the two of you in the restaurant, you know, let's call it successful. If it doesn't work out, well, deal with it. So now he's with me since then, and it's been very successful. So he's a great guy. He's, uh, people love him, and people, uh, you know, you, you just get good, uh, you know, because I see everything, I hear everything, and I watch everything, you know, of what's going on. But I hear just a good uh, feedback from the public and the people who come, you know. So. That's fantastic. It, it really is uh, almost like a marriage of sorts because uh, uh, it's like I say to, you know, uh, my co-workers and, uh, you know, cooks I've trained over the years, you, you know, it's important that you get along. It's important that uh, because in a lot of cases we spend more time with our co-workers in the restaurants when we do with our actual family. So, uh, so important for people uh, to get along. Gentlemen, this half hour has gone so quickly. And uh, as I said, there's so many other things we could have uh, could have discussed. Uh, a couple of the questions I had, maybe I'll uh, have you back again uh, and I can ask those questions. But uh, Chef Jill Heche and uh, restaurant manager Simon Newbold, from Chez Gilles Fine Dining and Catering on the Main Street in Meaford. Thank you so much for doing this, and uh, I wish you uh, all the best over the holiday season and moving forward into uh, let's get rid of 2020 and get into 2021. <laughs> thank thank you. you. All right. Uh, again, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Mom and Pop Eateries of Grey Bruce. Uh, I'm Rob Leonard and call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us or connect with us on social media. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. Now you can own your favorite Disney movies with Ignite TV. Choose from Disney titles such as Marvel Studios, Avengers Endgame. Assemble. Star Wars.